You kind of went to mini HHN, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I went to Orlando this past weekend, and uh, it was a good time. Those two Halloween Horror Nights houses I went through. Yeah, did the, you, were you able to get through them? Yes, um, middle of the day, um, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is so gave funny. A, it gave like a weird. I mean, yeah, it was kind of funny just going in it, like in the middle of the day. You know, the sunlight's out and everything. Um, Universal closed has been closing early except on the weekends i went on a friday um which is not considered a weekend there um <laughs> and it closed at the park closed at five yes university of hmm. florida had five, was at five and that's where the two houses are and um so the houses is tooth fairy um a revenge of the tooth fairy let me the revenge specific, yeah and then uh <laughs> just a regular ass tooth fairy just like very cheerful walkthrough. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ended as the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, yeah. So the first one we did, uh, that was really the first thing I did when I got to Universal. We went to Bride of Frankenstein first, um, and I loved it. Like, it was great. Um, now, we had express passes, but honestly, the line was, I think they had a post that like a 25-minute wait. Oh, so wow. it wouldn't have been bad just to wait anyways. And they, the queue line set up where it's they have, like, markers on the ground to like social distance at any kind of switchbacks they they sometimes have big long gaps in order to accommodate people that are staying you know next to each other to right. on all sides so um and, and everyone is really kind of sticking with those with the markers no one is really like pushing up on you um the whole time and people had masks on um before you got into the house there was a a staff member with a bottle of hand sanitizer just like just makes it just squirt run in your hand um and now it, now it was like everything we did at universal you had to get hand sanitizer before you did anything nice um, but yeah it was in the sound stages um so you walked in and literally it was like hhn um, i was gonna say did it feel like an hhn house was it, it like an felt, hhn experience it felt like everything like in the queue line like yes, because they had like the the, the black shirts with the orange lettering, and it just brought me back to when I worked there. Yeah. Not really because it was like daylight out. <laughs> um, maybe that first, like when we first opened, like for the night, and we had like like the first house drops, and people go right to like the first house. It kind of felt like that mm -hmm. maybe, but once we got in there and the music started, I like my my mouth was just like, and for people <laughs> listening, Very I happy. just had this big ass smile on my face. And the whole time, I was just walking through with this big smile on my face. They had the smells, the sounds. The only thing they had different was um, they had and the employees in the house that usually kind of, like, make sure the queue goes fast and the conga lining. Obviously, this time, they're pulsing you through to make sure you maintain social oh, wow. distance throughout it. And then sometimes they stop you if you actually, like, get too close to the people in front of you and then kind of hold it up to keep that, that distance in between. And – where all the scare actors were, those plexiglass in all their locations. Oh. It, yeah, which sometimes it gave away the scare, in my opinion, but other times you didn't even notice it. Like, it kind of worked with the lighting and stuff. And Oh, wow, they really that. hit it. Mm-hmm. Now, what did you prefer? Did you prefer Congo Line, or did you like the pulsing aspect of it? Uh, So, that's that's interesting, because I've always been like, oh, the pulsing's going to be so much better. But honestly, I like the conga line, which is shocking because <laughs> I always like the experience of being by yourself. But I don't know, it just felt more staged that way because, like, oh, like they're going to wait till you come out. So pretty much you got every scare actor, which in the grand scheme of things, I guess, is nice. But sometimes with the conga line, like, you, it'll get you randomly or, like, you, like, they might not get you. You hear something up ahead. You're like, what's coming and stuff. Yeah. You didn't get that that much with the with the full scene, but it kind of it was nice just you know having it to yourself because that does that rarely happens unless you get it at the end of the night or the beginning of the night. Wow. So, because I was gonna say when I went through HHN houses, I very much felt like they were set up for Congo line scares, like you could almost see the actors rotating and stepping on the pedal and just like, ah, ha, 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 ha. so I was kind of interested to see like did the scares kind of change up being behind plexiglass not being conga line like were they able to reset easier yeah they were definitely able to reset easier um but the same type of scares press on a pedal come out yeah. ah um <laughs> like in the first house of bride of frankenstein you know obviously you had the bride a lot showing up and scaring you especially at first and then in the in the like basically frankenstein dies she's like she's really upset and then she spends all this time trying to revive him and then she eventually finds someone that cans 
and so he gets revived. So now Frankenstein's in the mix. But honestly, but I, I didn't really like the Frankenstein character too much because every time like his like noises he made, it just sounded like he was like constipated all the time, just trying to take. He's like, uh, like really like just like I just want this like on the toilet. I'm out. I need it out of me right now. <laughs> um, Respect. But I just thought the makeup, the costumes, the house that had like a lot of like burning aspects of it um that was my favorite house hand down i mean obviously out of the two um some people agree with that some people disagree i found but i thought that one was really good i was really i was really high hoping for the the tooth fairy one but i really liked the first one the uh, theme of the of the uh tooth fairy just sounds so cool I, lo- I want that to be so good yeah so if this is a ranking show you would say frankenstein tooth fairy tooth fairy <laughs> That could be a whole show if this is a real year. <laughs> yeah. It could, no, it's just a little segment. Yeah. It, was a, it wasn't a segment. It was a question. <laughs> now, would, would you say that you are glad that they did this, or would you have rather it just been a forget it year? Oh, no, I'm glad they did it. Um, nice. You know, it's just something that, like, and they did it. I think they did it as best as they could. Like, I mean, it was yeah. totally safe in there. Again, they were really strict on, you know, not letting people, like, near them. Like, it would stop us sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it was just the same kind of experience in the house. Like, just the length was the same. Same kind of design. Like, basically, these houses were already built. And then they just kind of retro, like, fitted them to meet, like, yeah. you know, the plexiglass for the scare actor's safety. And, they, they, and then they were able to hire more scare actors. Because instead of just having two casts for each house, they have four because oh. it, it's all day pretty much yeah um so they have four casts throughout the whole day just like two shifts and then um so a lot of scare actors are able to get their you know their jobs that they're looking forward to um and stuff like that and like not funky hours just like oh, i'm going to my nine to five as a angry ass tooth fairy <laughs> yeah <laughs> the tooth fairy, cool. yeah the tooth fairy house um uh, we did that a little bit later afterwards we rode mummy and then we're, we're actually we're getting all that stuff after later. Yeah. But basically, we kind of we did some rides, and then we came back and did uh, Tooth Fairy. And so the weird thing, we walk in, and this is actually the soundstage was in. I actually had a house in that exact same spot, so oh, yeah. I'm just curious how they have it set up. But you you have this like long hallway of just like curtains on each side before you go into the first scene. But in the hallway, they have these banners laying down, and there's just this weird question of like what would you do if a child says no? I'm like, what, what is it? That's literally the first like theme you know, have. I was like, this is a very weird question. And what are we asking this child? Like, you know, there's no like, what question are we asking this child? And then, and then they had like a little marquee sign. And then it had like a little kind of like video on replay of like this, of, like this lady turns to this like two fairy and stuff. Um, and then you go around the corner and you have like the front of it. And it's like kind of like a, a book kind of it's all kind of like yellow pages and gray and it's like a design and stuff and then you're kind of walking into the book and that's how you enter into the world so that yeah. was pretty cool in my in, in my aspect I, in my thoughts i really like that yeah. but then you go in the first scene i think it was like a little bedroom and it was just like this like fake mannequin boy in a sailor outfit and then like you see the two fairy and her her teeth are just so messed up you could tell they, like she was tortured that's how they created the fairy the tooth fairy centroy um and yeah the whole literally the whole house was just these two fairies coming out and it was the same scare just ah and then they were just kind of like shake their hands like kind of like you can't really see it on the video um but everybody just kind of moving and doing a jig and later on the the little kids are starting to get kind of converted into these like evil demon children and stuff oh okay yeah i feel like this might have been the worst house that they were going to have for the event and they were just like let's just fucking burn this one and uh it'll be a bonus so people will like it <laughs> maybe, maybe i don't know because they didn't really i don't think they really announced anything maybe a couple houses maybe before no it's all it's always speculation yeah then but usually they, they started announcing stuff in april and may but obviously yeah. it was shut down so they were able to keep you know obviously speculation but they they were already building them, of course. So yeah. they usually start building them pretty early in the year. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a year round thing, right? Kind of. I mean, they take a little break for a little bit because they do some stuff with the sound stages, but then they yeah. then it converts to HHN very okay. quickly. So 
Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to experience a little bit of Halloween. I did. Especially since we have nothing going on in yeah. Kansas City. Honestly, it was, it was great. Like, it, it kind of got my little fix done. And, like, of course, I wish, you know, the whole event was there. Obviously, I know there's no way they could have done it. Um, but, you know, at least, at least I got a little bit of a taste of it. So That, that is cool. Yeah. I could say I went to the HHN COVID edition, which is not even called an HHN. It's just like it's part of like two two seasonal attractions. Yeah. Yeah. Would it technically have been HHN 30 or 29? Yeah, this year was supposed to be 30. Uh, they had merch out and stuff. Did you go in the store? I did not. We we talked about it, and I, honestly, I forgot to go in the store. So That's yeah. all right. Yeah. It's just you went through the houses. That's the, that's the important part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 